Welcome to the first annual gun game competition where three contestants shoot to win on an eight stage course of fire with 18 different firearms and three off-road vehicles. Standard Call of Duty gun game rules apply. Each shooter must make one hit with a weapon before moving on to the next one. And we are your hosts. My name is Phil Rushmore. And I'm Rush Fillmore. And today we are joined by none other than the Dr. Ooh. That's right, but let's go down to Steven, our reporter on the ground, and just check out what these shooters are up against in this massive course of fire. Thanks guys, so the contestants are gonna start out on this first stage, the Secret Service stage. And we call it that because it is a sloped roof. This is actually the most dangerous stage because that is an absolute hazard. And the shooter has three minutes to engage a target at about 140 meters. From there, they have to run to stage two for the Hopkins Special. They have to shoot a flamboyant high point C9 and a Glock with no rear irons. And from there, they must don a gas mask, a flux raider, and run into the woods, make their hit, switch to an Opscore bump helmet, and hop on an e-bike through the woods to stage four, which is a mid-range shot with a suppressed AK-47 and high point carbine. The shooter must then grab the MCX and take an ATV up the hill to the CQB stage. Once inside the structure, the shooter must engage with an MCX and switch to their concealed carry hand gun and then make their way out to the house to stage six where five guns are staged a 357 magnum walther pbq tavor x95 with irons lmt 308 and a q fix with irons from there they have to run into the trenches where they have to engage clay pigeon drones with an 870 and super x2 shotgun and finally take a dirt bike for the final stage where they have two bolt guns and that really rounds out the competition so thanks guys back to you thanks steven before we get this event started off, gentlemen, let's check out some of the contestants who have made it through the prelims to the main event and see what we're up against today. D. Rue Hopkins, six foot, 210 pounds, Murray State University, go racers. Joshua Lowry, University of Portland, Oregon. Not sure if that's an actual place because I was homeschooled. Five foot two, 245 pounds. Specialist Jones, Combat Cook, Army National Guard, go Army. It right, looks like Nick has lost the coin toss, so he has to go first. He's also lost in the game of life with the redheaded genetics, but it's basically just an uphill battle. He's used to it, Phil. That's right. This guy runs like a Welshman, has red hair like a leprechaun, and is allergic to the sun. This, this could be a rough one to watch today. He tried to maintain the back arch posture, but just couldn't do it. You can tell it's his natural position. Oh, look at him closing an eye like an amateur. <laughs> <laughs> Must be his first time behind iron sights. Yeah, I remember my first time behind iron sights. You know, Phil, I really like to give this guy a break because me and him have some common oh, ground. Hold on, hold hey, on. He made a hit. That's five bucks, Doc. I owe you five. You do. He did get a first round yeah, hit. I didn't. Yep. I thought there was no way. Yeah, look at those long legs. I bet he has to shop in the long, tall, and ugly section every time. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Speaking man. of ugly, check out that high point C9. A little turquoise on it. Now, one thing that you may see with some of these contestants, there it is, is a failure to have basic firearms understanding. Doc, that is a poor excuse for a mustache attempt, I'll tell you that. It really is. I mean, it's almost invisible on his pale skin. Plenty of recoil on that 9mm when you have a small frame to begin with. Oh, he seems to have a little bit of a malfunction there. A-zone targets have historically given this man trouble. We'll see if he can improve on the larger targets in the later stages. I think he's just, you know, he doesn't have a lot of time uh, from, from the statistics I've looked at uh, of running guns. You know, he's usually, you know, the cameraman. So I'm cutting him some slack today. I'm going to cut him some slack, but um, we'll see how he picks up the rest of the rest of the match. Yeah, so. here life expectancy of redheads is also shorter. So he's just always under the clock. He's really huffing and puffing going down there. I don't know if he's going to make his mark. Oh, he uh, he missed his mark. He missed his mark. That's going to be a 10, point, 10 second penalty for sure. Oh, he can't find the optic. Yep, that's a common problem for someone who does not train. Doc, it actually looks like he was trying to initiate the, the surefire light there that didn't seem to come on, so. Mm, from what I remember, that was what was discussed, but if you're not cheating, you're not trying. He's taking a lot of time getting through this course of fire. Let's, uh, let's cut over to our first commercial break while he uh, gets himself together. <laughs> If you struggle to perform at night because of low lumen and low candela, ModLite is the drug for you. With dual fuel bodies that take both rechargeable and CR123 batteries, you'll never run out of the juice that you need to pump those lumens through photonic barriers. Link is in the description. Side effects may include addiction to high quality accessories, temporary blindness, burnt night vision tubes, and a god complex when operating at night. Ooh, 
what? It is worth noting that Nick generally does drop the camera, pick up a firearm, and win in competition against some of his employers. But the difference is that when there's pressure on and something on the table, i.e. a day off, he just can't hang. As we sometimes say around here, homeboy just can't hang. Isn't that right, Doc? That's right. Isn't that right, Rush? That is right, Doc. You know, Nick is all about the movements and the body positioning. You know, he had the back arch earlier, he went to prone really fast, and now his he just instantly straddled that bike like he's used to that position as well. Look the only thing go. that's going through his head right now is how much longer his legs are than all the other contestants. He probably could have just ran that faster than he took the e-bike. Quite frankly, with his pedigree on two wheels, I expected him to be a whole lot faster. So, oh, did you see that? Specialist Jones just took extra time to turn his safety on. I've, I've seen Nick train for days out of every year. That cost him extra time. That's that's really going to keep him up late at night. He's getting miss after miss at this point. I mean, he's, he's shooting bricks. Man, this guy hasn't been able to hit anything all day, and I don't know if we're going to see any improvement in that anytime soon, Doc. I don't either. Spend all that money on a fancy singing watch and can't shoot 23-cent 9 mil rounds. <laughs> it gets even worse than that, Doc. Rush, I heard that was even given to him by singing instruments. I don't think he even had to pay a dime for it. What a shill. I, I think Hopkins down there is getting extra time learning how to not run this course of fire. Mm, if my judgment on Hopkins is correct, he never games stuff. He tries to take it as authentic as he can, so this would in no way help his time. Oh. Oh. What do we have there? I forgot about Completely this forgot the gun on the trailer. Yeah, he's, he's resorted to talking to himself. He's not in a good mental oh, state God. right now. Doc, what's I mean, he's always living on the edge anyway, so this is clearly pushing him over his limits. Okay, I gotta give you the $5 back. I thought he'd be faster on that. You're right, he absolutely does not do well on four wheels. No, no, two is really his specialty. If you double him, that's a bruiser for this redhead. Once again, getting the sling over the helmet and the ear pro. Looks like he's doing it for the first time in his life. Yeah, all the gingers I know, they just have to take their wins as they come. Transitioning the pistol here. Oh, oh. the gun wasn't even loaded. Also don't know why he took that corner so slow, like it was, you know, an actual threat situation. This is just a competition. That's right, that's right, Phil Rush, well, Rush Fillmore. Yeah, his footwork was pretty good. I mean, we all know that CQB is only ever about footwork that's the only thing that matters let's see how he navigates this five gun course of fire here this five gun stage all right he okay he's got the 357 i wouldn't be surprised oh if we see goodness. an nd here he yeah. doesn't look too uh, confident in wheel gun experience no he doesn't oh yeah that was a surprise to everyone i've never seen a ginger fire revolver that's a first for me oh he skips over the wall through ppq let's see, if he, five let's see if he goes back to it doc let's see if he goes back to it now, Doc, with so many firearms and varying serial numbers in front of him, does oh, yeah, this right. start to induce different levels of stress and anxiety, especially for someone with Irish heritage? Oh, yes, God. but Nick is predisposed to stress. I mean, he is a ca full-time cameraman with some very uh, overbearing, uh, you know, direction and bosses. So it could definitely like affect him some. I will say. Every day of his life is stress. I mean, he basically came from H-E double hockey stick, so he's used to that, you know, those fiery situations. And still, he cleared through the most of his guns. Sure enough, ran away from that Walther like it was made in Germany. My goodness. You know, Phil, he really struggled with that 308 LMT, so maybe, you know, instead of spending so much time editing, he should take some time and, uh, get to the gym. Thanks uh, for joining in and dogging on, uh, Specialist Jones over here. It's nice well, to know you're a part of our team. Yeah. Oh, uh, big whiff on that. That's it doesn't brutal. get any easier than the shotgun oh, stage. I don't know if he knows that the gun isn't loaded. Oh, oh, what do you even call that, Phil? I don't know. I'd call that a oh. premature launchification. That's, that's just, that's tough to see. He really biffed that stage. Yeah. Let's see if he can do better with the Super X2. Now, semi-autos, Specialist Jones has a lot more experience with. As a government oh. employee, that's where he spends most of his time. We won't hold that against him there. Oh, uh, two more Looks misses. Looks like he got that hit on the last one, though, Doc. I don't may have to play that, that one back. All right, now he's going to his bread and butter, the dirt bike. Let's see if he can pull on his years of experience here to really kick it up a notch. Oh, he popped it. Oh! Oh! oh. Man, there's minus five extra seconds for style points that's one way to shave off some time. here yeah oh but he, oh oh wait a minute you can tell he really cares about this because he's trying to take his time to make sure it's not on the ground but oh, oh looks like he's gonna set it down anyways that's Man. too bad there goes those five seconds he's going up to the bolt guns this is great because if nick was a gun he would be a bolt gun and if he was an animal he'd be a granddaddy long leg 
Now, he has had some luck here today, so let's see. Oh, first round impact yet again. Man, these bolt guns really seem to be Nick's specialty. We thought he was going to save some time on the two wheels, but the bolt guns really seem to be where he is performing well today. He's starting to get some dad grunts in there. Oh, oh. safety. More safety Once issues. again, mm. once again. Well, that wraps up the first run of the day. Specialist Jones did the best he could, and it went just as we expected. Poorly. That's going to bring us to our second sponsor of the day. First sponsor of the day? If you've been hit with fraud or glaring reticles in the sunlight, there is hope for you. We can't help with fraud, but 100 Concepts brings hope to those with optics. ARD is safe on the battlefield and at home. Scopecap Pros ship with an anti-reflective device sized just for your lens. Maybe know someone with an unprotected light? Tell them about the new ruggedized light cap and save 15% off with the link below. All right, so we have Josh J-Lo Lowry. They call him J-Lo because of the cake he carries around all the time. Fun fact about Josh Lowry, he is from the Pacific Northwest, Portland more specifically, which you would know if you watch any of his videos because oh he always God. mentions it. Portland, Oregon, downtown Portland, Portland, Oregon, downtown Portland. That's kind of my story. I guess proximity to violence is quite the accolade these days. He's all about the posturing, making it look like he's the popular guy and that everyone loves him. He even says heckin' on camera and what the heck and what the flip, but we know we've seen some behind the scenes. Just terrible. All that extra dry fire that's been done was it's clearly not invested into single shot firearms. That's that's a bruiser. He certainly went into this with a false sense of superiority. Thought he would make those hits. And, oh, we are have a we have a wedgie forming in those cry knockoffs. Yeah, I, I hear they're real. I hear they were I hear they're real. You no, know, I'm really surprised, Doc, that J Lo had issues with the high point. Being from Portland, Oregon and all there, that that seemed he should have been pretty competent with that gun. Yeah, from a sports psychology perspective, a wedgie actually gives them a, a boost of energy or a little oh, bit of a rush of adrenaline right true. off the bat. But if you don't pull it out soon enough, it actually becomes very uncomfortable and can degrade performance and degrade your underwear because of the skid mark factor. So let's see how he continues on. If he finds a place to like catch a breather and really dig that sucker out. All right, that's enough, Doc. Thank you very much. Clearly, we're moving along very quickly in this run. It looks like J-Lo Lowry has been clearing through those pistol stages relatively quickly. First round impact with a Glock with no sights. Gas mask went on well. He did forget to clear it, though, so that may be causing a little bit of extra huffing and puffing. One, two, three. That was a real accuracy by volume tactic there by J-Lo. I think what? it's uh, it's very possible that uh, the RO uh, on stage was not actually calling hits, and so the, the contestant J-Lo continued to fire until someone called hit. He is really sweating it up. Most people don't know this about Josh, but he was born with wool fur. Uh, you know, growing up in the Pacific Northwest, he often, you know, there were reports of Bigfoot. On, that was until gun. someone actually just spotted him and scientists analyzed the footage and found out that it was just Josh running around naked in the woods. Oh, Let's see this how he navigates this. here. Looks like he missed his oh, turn. Oh, oh, he goes oh, 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 oh. off the trail resulted in a near deadly trail. crash. That's that's just, he's going to be uh, writing home about that one. Mom, I'm okay, and my wedgie did come yeah, out. Yeah, I think he did just try and dig that wedgie out a little bit. I saw him do a little booty shift on that and then stand up trying to push it out. I, I admire the, uh, the effort. All right, so he's coming up here to stage four. Let's see how he... All right, that was a pretty good navigation right there. Good dismount off the e-bike. Great dismount. He's great at dismounting. Much more of a dismount kind of guy than a mount kind of guy. Let's see how he does on the high point. Mm. I get the sense that this gun was not actually zeroed. Man, mm. we were that's told, all five misses. We were told by uh, someone named Doc that this gun was zeroed. It does not seem to be the case, but clearly moving through that issue, moving on first round impact with an AK. Now that's some good shooting. First round impact with a communist gun. Let's be real. So, Oh, J-Lo also misses the MCX mm. back on the trailer. Now right now in Josh's head, he's blaming everyone but himself for those misses. And that's pretty that's pretty par for the course for J-Lo. Alright, he seems to be going a little bit quicker on this. He has pulled up to the crack house. He is making his entry. Great dismount. Now that's yet again. good footwork that we're seeing there through the, through the house. Mm, so first round impact. Ooh, nice transition. Okay. He's trying to make up time here, guys. Don't you think, Whoa, Phil? You I, I think so. There's He's definitely trying to make up time for those missed bolt gun shots. So we'll see how he plays on this table coming up with these five guns. It's at this point in his mind, he's probably telling himself how much better he is than everyone else and how much better of an upbringing he had being homeschooled. So he thinks, you know, 
He's got he's got some confidence in the stage. He does, he does. First round impact with that fix. Moving on to the LMT. Oh, big oh, whiff and a little miss. bit of a little bit of uh, uh, thinking there. He thought he was gonna get that first round impact, went straight to safe, and uh, ended up missing actually. Nothing like missing with a rifle at ten yards. All right, he's got the Israeli gun complete. Going on to the German gun. Oh, so we have communist German. He seems very oh, familiar no. with those two types does, of guns. Does. It looks a little to bit me of a like uh, JLo was sabotaged there and did not have a full full wheel in his gun. Bill, we may have to play that back. It did look like one of those rounds came out as soon as he picked it up. Yeah, his wedge is very much affecting him right now. He looks very fatigued. Just went down into that trench like there was no drones chasing him. Let's see how he uh, how he handles the 870. It was camouflage, so it was kind of hard to see in the grass when he picked it up. Man, he is really huffing and puffing. Mmm, it's a shame. That's hard to see. Oh! He's getting a little agitated with the the play pitch and throw. Yeah, sorry, right, we got a hit there though. It it you know you had one pellet nick it, but it's acceptable. A hit's oh. a hit. Mm. Very nice, mm. very nice. First hit, clear the gun. Moving on to the dirt oh, bike. J Lo does look like one of those guys that probably went to the country club with his dad growing up to shoot a lot of clay pigeons. So. I agree. Yeah. He also looks like the kind of guy whose dad bought him three bikes like that whenever he was seven. All right, let's see how he takes off. All right. Oh. Oh, first gear all the way. Just redlining it. I wonder how Specialist Jones feels about that. Let it scream. Let's let's check his dismount, though. Much faster. Oh, much yes. faster. Looks like he learned from Specialist Jones down there. He was watching and just dumped the bike all together. Sure now, did. Once again, it looks like this gun was staged in an incorrect location. He had to put a little bit of extra movement in there. Let's see if JLo can redeem himself. Oh, there's a first round impact hit on that one. He's got one more to go. See how he finishes up on this 300 Win Mag. He's not used to shooting cheap guns. And another miss. Mm. Not surprised. It's too poor for him. There we go. Overall run, that was textbook. That was just beautiful by JLo Lowry. That was perfect. Now we are going to be cutting to a brief commercial break, but stay with us. Don't change that channel. We will be right back. Every day, Drew goes without two meals. For $6 a day, you can feed his malnourished body for three months. Right now, if you go to preparewithdc.com, you can save $200 on a three-month food supply and get free shipping. Don't take your sustenance for granted. One day, Drew's mom won't be able to go to the grocery store to get his Hot Pockets and Chicky Nuggies, and neither will you. So go to preparewithdc.com and secure your three-month food supply for $200 off and free shipping. If you're terrible at shooting and have trouble making friends, night vision might be right for you. That's where Steel Industry comes in, because the first rule to gunfighting is looking cool, and night vision will do that for you. Yes, you can see in the dark and navigate at night to protect your family and property in the hard times to come, but today you need to make friends and fit in. So don't waste your money on ammo and training. Pick up Night Vision from Steel Industries, who we trust with their excellent customer service and largest ready-to-ship inventory of the best night vision on the market. Discount code in the description. Welcome back. We're going to be moving right along. And next up for the contestants is Drew Hopkins. Let's see how he does. I think this guy's got it in the bag. He's got the home court advantage. Well, Phil, you know, I am surprised that Drew actually is here on time to run his match. From what I gathered from the other contestants, he tends to not be on time very often. That's true. Rarely, if ever, is he there before the agreed upon time. One thing the other two contestants don't realize is how late Drew stays up to cover all the things that they've forgotten about. Uh, you know, just like a good dad to his girls, he often has to play dad to his boys. As it turns out, it sounds like Drew Hopkins, the Hobbit, is going to be taking closer to 2,000 steps. So I don't, I don't so much know about that six foot height advantage, but even after the SIG cross failures, he did get a good hit with that Mauser. Moving on to that high point. Yeah, he is known for his prowess with even the worst of weapons like a high point C9 and even making shots on targets with no iron sights whatsoever. Some may even say that he's the inverse of Lowry JLo, where he does not perform well with high-end guns that are accurate, but he has a unique proficiency with garbage. Now, Drew did remember to-, to Oh, Phil, mask. did you see that? He completely forgot his ears. He's gonna have to go back. 
Guys, I do believe that, that was intentional. Drew does like a, uh, a close game, so I think he may just be trying to give a little bit more of an edge to his competitors. He's not one to forget anything. Well, considering there is an entire day off paid, uh, according to the Dirty Civilian team, I don't think he's going to be taking any extra chances here. Oh, first round impact with the Flux. Very impressive, very impressive. He's really huffing and puffing. Let's do a replay of all the grunts. Let's just see how it affects his performance. Now Drew's getting back on that dirt bike. I should say e-bike. He's uh, had the least amount of time on bikes, but he's really been putting time in. Man, but you can see here, he just looks very uncomfortable on that thing. Not standing up on the pegs. Someone give that man a little bit of extra practice. He, he charted his own trail because he is truly a pioneer like that, just leading the way, you know, finding a better way to do things. Not something the other two contestants are very good at on their own. He's really scooting at this point. I think his uh, aerodynamic frame really helps him out in this uh, dense woodland. Oh, so under six foot would be an appropriate aerodynamic frame? Uh, right at right at six, six and a quarter. First gun, so he changes plans and goes to the AK. He must feel more confident in that platform. Is he bracing or is that just a hobbit squat? He's standing up. He's He's standing up. Moving on to the Charlton Heston special, the high point. One, two, three, four. Oh! We do have a hit out of the high point. On impact. If I do remember correctly, Drew was the one that confirmed zero on that, so he knew exactly where to hold Phil. Sounds like some insider baseball to me. From what I understand, the last time he confirmed zero was about five years ago, so drop it, guys. Oh, he's definitely maxing out that. I, I do think that he can ride that a little bit faster because he weighs less because he's been watching his form a lot more than the other contestants. Let's see how he... Oh, look at that footwork. This guy knows what's up. Nothing special to me. That's about standard if you ask me. A little slow on the reholster. I'll give him that. He did have the advantage coming out of that. No need to duck the head there. So he does have a little bit of a time gap to make up on the other contestants. That's fair. That's fair. All right, let's see how he handles these. Which order is... He's really going to pick these really, up. Really should have cleared that first. Once again, a high end gun. That's hard for Drew to work with. Man. Brutal. It yeah. looks like he's really Russian here, Phil. Uh, he looks pretty American to me, but so I would keep comments like that to yourself once again. Great with the Walther. You can tell he was a Bond fan his whole life. Too bad they discontinued the PPQ oh, yeah, well, series, okay. which was really made famous. Oh, what is oh, this? A little bit of trash talking here. Wow, that, that may be a deduction on time, being that it seems as if Specialist Jones, who was responsible for, for loading that stage previously, what a shame, did not do an appropriate job of putting mags into rifles. Yeah, they definitely had some time, but Drew's used to having to deal with his friends really just messing up the whole flow of everything, and just he's just powering through it. He's not letting it get to his head. He knows he's been wronged. He knows that all the other contestants are against him and really setting him up to fail, and he's still determined to beat them. Doc, he sure is huffing and puffing for somebody that has a full gym set in his garage. I've never seen so much dust on a set of weights before. They must have each gained an extra pound. Oh, oh did you see that? that slide? Okay, that was a power slide. We're gonna, have to, run, we're gonna have to run that back on slow-mo. Let's check it out again. Mm, man, what a great slide cancel. Oh. Yeah, that was a hard push for him. Those weights in the garage, they need to be moved, not just purchased in order to make a difference in one's life. Oh, oh that was a little close to the cars, guys. Um, okay, good. that was a good follow-up shot. Ah. This is going to be... Oh, and there's another the dagger on just about ah. what we expected. Once again, returning to a mode of transportation that... Drew has the least amount of experience with. We're gonna see how this actually goes. Another fun fact for you folks, Drew recently, because of his elderly age, had to have his driver's license taken away, but he is working to get his motorcycle endorsement. I can tell you, it's not going well. Sure, I thought, oh! 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 Uh, hey, he navigated that perfectly. That looked intentional to me, guys. I Doc, know. I was just about to ask if that was intentional or if that was just incompetence, but I, I think, I don't know, the way he dismounted that, it could have been, you know, perfectly intentional. I there. think he knew exactly what he was doing, just like he's done this whole run and will clearly be the winner here. 
It's taking a lot of time getting that. Oh, man, that thing rocked his world. He's gonna have to adjust his bipod. Look, yeah, look at that. That thing darn near knocked him off the roof. Okay, well, you know, the like... helmet is actually sized for fatter heads um, that have swollen, not because they have bigger brains, they just swollen out of ego. And so, you know, it's really riding down on his face, it looks like. And it looks like those Ops Core Step In uh, Eye Pro, it's really starting to fog up on him here. It's all about the grunt work. A continuation of dad grunts. That oh, must be helmet. one of his specialties there. He's got this dialed in. Well, oh. folks, that wraps up the competition. We're going to be calculating the times as well as the extra hit factor, misses, failure to insert magazines, and wedgie factor. Then after all that, we're going to be taking it down and getting a closer look as we interview and talk to the contestants themselves. Yeah, you know, I think being the first one to go uh, kind of set me up for a disadvantage. You know, the other two contestants, you know, they were able to watch me go and you know, take some mental notes for, for the runs to, you know, really, really get them on a good time. And so I, I really think I probably set them up for success for this. So we, we just can't be volunteering like that anymore. We'll, uh, we'll have to come back next time just better. Uh Nick and Josh definitely put up a good show. Um, Nick was certainly at a disadvantage. I'll give him that. I'll give him that. He takes L's all the time, so I'll give him a W. I just, I just, I just, I, I just lost a lot of time on simple things. You know, uh, Nick also kind of set me up for failure on stage six uh, with all the mags unloaded. I think once, uh, you know, in the court of public opinion, I think the, the winner is pretty clear, and I'm happy with that because that's, that's reputation, not a trophy. And, um, when you factor in all that little time there that I lost, I actually think I probably came out on top, um, uh, which is where I prefer to be. Yeah, so the dirt bike spill, I know it looked like it was an accident, but it was actually intentional. It was all about the timing and, and using my own momentum to rocket me off of that, put me in a position where I could then burst into the final stage. And honestly, if I wasn't rocking double upper deckies before I started that, probably wouldn't have made it through. Um, you know, at the end of the day, it's exactly what I expected. I think those guys are great, but they uh, they placed in the exact same position that I I would have assumed they would have landed in, which is last and second last. Um, I just want to take a moment and thank all my fans. You guys are fantastic, just phenomenal. And um, something that I want to say to my fans is I, I'm, I'm not my biggest fan, but I am my favorite person, which really just boils down to the fact that I love me more than anyone else, um, but other people probably love me more than I love myself. So thank you, thank you. From the bottom of my heart, I am the best. Ladies and gentlemen, the results are in. It comes as no surprise that Nick Jones comes in dead last Aww. with a run time of seven minutes and 48 seconds, plus an additional 20 seconds for completely missed targets because he's <laughs> awful. <laughs> so that puts him at eight minutes Aww. and eight seconds. Now, we do have to factor in the handicap. He did go first, so that subtracts an additional 20 seconds. Uh, puts him right back down to seven minutes and 48 seconds. Now, Josh Lowry comes in at six minutes and 26 seconds. Absolutely great run time. Uh, he did miss one target, which adds 10 seconds to his overall time, putting him at six minutes and 36 seconds. Now, when you factor in Drew's time, he came in at six minutes and 43 seconds. So he is he is lost to Josh, uh, putting him in second, second plate. Hold on. Okay, according to our editors, we have found that if you take out the time that it took Drew to load those mags that were improperly set up for him by the other contestant, Nick Jones, who was probably paid to do that by the other contestant, Josh Lowry, it actually knocks his time down to six minutes and 31 seconds, which puts him ahead of J-Lo, whose time was six minutes and 36 seconds. You know, now, I, I gotta say, I gotta say that the, the J-Lo team and all those in the J-Lo paddock they saw this coming. There's gotta be some funny business going on in the editing room because not all contestants work in the same field. Some of us have to do finances or business or accounting, some other some other things. And those of those of us who need to work on editing can very easily smudge some numbers. So yeah, well the you know the accountants should stick to the accounting and stay out of the editing room because they don't understand that an edit takes, you know, 20 hours for to, to complete for one hour of footage captured. Uh, so they just have really no frame of reference whatsoever as to what goes into the work that makes these videos amazing and possible. So they should probably just keep their mouths shut. <laughs> well, at this point, my mustache is starting to sweat off my face and I've had just about enough out of both of you for one day. 
Yeah, I've had about enough of you guys for my entire life, and if I didn't need you to continue on this business, well, <laughs> I'd never talk to you again. With that being said, you know, it's actually kind of sad that this has ended in such anger and frustration between ourselves because this video is all about camaraderie and hanging out with the boys and, and making each other better and, and in some cases just absolutely degrading and demoralizing each other and leaning into the dark humor and just straight up bullying each other to the point of, well, all that you can do is get better. At the end of the day, no one's actually getting a day off, but the benefit is all three of us felt like we had a great adventure while getting some work done, creating content like this possible for each and every one of you while still making a video and experimenting and enjoying ourselves on the range. So in a way, we all had our own day off. We just so happened to do it together. Now, the person who had the least amount of fun was Nick because he actually had to work. Guys, if you'd like to see these guys continue on to the World Championship, they do have a Patreon, and that Patreon will help them continue to keep on going and see if they can come out on top next go around. And keep our editor employed. Oh. Oh.